time with non-Americans, not that I don't like Americans, but I, I, in my team I have you know, Germans, I interact with Spaniards, with Indian people, with Chinese people, all trying to dominate the world in their mind, and uh, it's very, very diverse. It's not really America where I, I feel. This is a bad one. I don't know who can change it. Martin will know. But truth, if you're not from Silicon Valley, you matter less. If you give your card from Paris, nothing from Madrid, of course, Madrid is fine. But if you give your card and not in between San Francisco and San Jose to a tech blogger there or to, you know, a um, key company, you matter kind of less. So this is really, really sad, but it's a fact. I don't know how we can, uh, we can, we can change it. You have to stop <laughs> thinking in terms of I want to dominate Madrid or I want to dominate Paris, or I want to dominate Hamburg. And that's the key difference as well, is there they just want to dominate. They choose a niche, and they want to be the best in the world of that niche. And here, and I, I have done that myself, my first company, I wanted to dominate Paris, it was an agency, and, and it, was pretty, it, it worked pretty well. But by the time you think too much about dominating Spain, you have the same company in the US, which will probably dominate you know, like focus on, on being global, that's what I mean. And it, it looks like very simple as an idea, but I think it's a state of mind. When you wake up, don't think about dominating Spain or France or Germany, but just think worldwide stuff, but you can be very small and think, uh, think this way. We should stop copying stuff. And that, that is the worst ever for entrepreneurship in Europe. And some people, actually some friends of mine or ours, are actually defending that view that copying is fine, copycats, it's fine. This is horrible, it's terrible. I think this is killing Europe. Like Foursquare being the latest example, like I went to France last week, they had two Foursquare clubs already. You know, and yeah, you can make some money. Sure, you can do a successful club or something and sell it quickly. But how sad, it, it, that's why we don't innovate. It, it, you couldn't do that in Silicon Valley. Why? Because if you go to a dinner, and if you go to a coffee, whatever, it's social pressure that you are the one doing a copycat, you kind of suck by default. So you can't do it. And you're like, what? You're a four-star clone? <coughs> Maybe one of them, right? Maybe very one or two, but maximum. In Europe, you tend to, oh, he works in Silicon Valley, the coffee will sell it. Just stop doing that. It's, um, just a, a way to, you know, think. Tend to hire locally. Just don't, these are like more advice which I'm applying to myself, by the way, but don't hire only French, Spanish, or German people. Just try to have, you know, diverse uh, teams. And I think it, in a place like Madrid, it's totally possible. Um, thinking in English by default, I know in Spain you don't have, like, the Spanish is so widespread compared to our languages, including French, that you don't really have that problem. But it really, it has helped me moving there by changing my state of mind, not think in terms of, you know, I had one point, one and a half months of lunch booked in Paris with French people, talking about French politics and so on. And it, it's, a, it's a mind shift that if you, if you stop thinking only in English, it helps you get in global, of course. And um, I know the Spain territory is big enough. But so, last, last two slides on, on positive note, I think it's easy to fix. If you think about the web, when I started the web in 2003, I said there is there no French in this conference, and it was in Paris. And we, we actually had press, we had a lot of uh, bad press about it, because I said, if you don't speak English, don't even show up, it's not for you. Period. You can speak French, but just there won't be any French on stage, no translation. It was a big message. And look at it, we are now 2,500 people, 50 countries, just because, you know, I decided it was not a local event. And I read that this, uh, you know, this uh, uh, objective as well. You can have this in mind with your company if you, uh, if you try to uh, think global, meet it at once, uh, find a niche, innovate, don't copy, don't copy too much. <laughs> don't do a clone to sell it, that doesn't, you know, help much. Aim at being the world leader of something. And it can be a very small thing. It doesn't have to be, you know, a big thing. It can be really, really targeted. And then you will get noticed for innovating and not, not for, uh, for just copying another uh, US company. Focus on execution. The idea doesn't matter much. 
you know, just take a space. It's so easy with Twitter and Facebook and all the social networking to get now uh, initial community of users, which is not from where you are. It's like things that have completely changed in 10 years. Now you can interact and launch a product, get feedback from 10, 20 countries very easily just using social networking. I would love that you do it in English. Again, maybe you only target Spanish wall, well, that's fine, but I can't read you if you do that. I actually get some Spanish, but not that much. Um, and, um, and I'm sure I have enemies in the room now. But yeah, so it's become much more easier, and you have everything here to be successful. You can get Martin on your board and invest, and you can get Jose Maria to advise to you, but it's just a question of, of spirit and mind, and, uh, and, and think global. Thank you very much. Thank you.